What is marijuana? When we step back and think about it, it's hard to believe that we really need to have this discussion at all. As we noted in Chapter 1, humans have been using marijuana as an intoxicant for thousands of years, and according to a 2008 medical journal review, there are now more than 17,000 published studies and papers available in the scientific literature analyzing pot, its constituents, and their effects on the human body. In short, marijuana is one of the most studied and widely used plants in human existence, yet despite marijuana's exceedingly long and detailed history, many people today are unfamiliar with the plant's effects and pharmacology. Here are some basics. The term marijuana is Mexican in origin and is typically used to refer to any part of or any one of the three distinctive species of the cannabis plant. Cannabis sativa, which tends to grow tall and stocky, cannabis indica, which tends to grow smaller and bushier, or cannabis ruralis, a wild-growing species of cannabis found primarily in Russia and Eastern Europe. Grown outdoors, the cannabis plant will typically reach maturity within three to five months. Grown indoors under optimum heat and lighting, the plant may reach maturity within as few as 60 days. Humans have used various parts of the cannabis plant for a multitude of purposes. Most people are aware that marijuana is used as an intoxicant, but far fewer know that certain varieties of cannabis, as well as most parts of the plant, including the seeds and the stalk, contain virtually no psychoactive properties, yet offer many other potential benefits. For example, ground seeds from the marijuana plant contain uniquely high and balanced levels of essential amino acids and essential fatty acids, and may be baked into a variety of nutritional foodstuffs, such as bread, butter, and salad dressing. Oil can also be processed from cannabis seeds and used for sautéing or consumed as a nutritional supplement. Since the seeds contain no euphoria producing compounds, the importation and domestic sale of certain cannabis-based foods, oils, and sterilized seeds is permitted in the United States. The stock of the marijuana plant, primarily of the cannabis sativa variety, which can grow to 20 feet in height, can also be harvested for its vast fiber content. Most industrialized nations, including Canada, Japan, Australia, and the European Union, regulate the commercial production of low-potency varieties of cannabis commonly called hemp for industrial purposes. This practice is hardly new. During America's colonial era, many of the founding fathers, including George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, espoused cultivating cannabis for the production of rope, sails, cloth, and paper. In fact, as recently as during World War II, the U.S. government commissioned tens of thousands of domestic farmers to grow marijuana to assist with America's wartime needs. A 1943 film produced by the U.S. Department of Agriculture entitled Hemp for Victory calls the plant indispensable in the service of mankind. Following the war's conclusion, however, the U.S. government imposed a complete ban on the domestic production of the plant, including the cultivation of non-psychoactive cannabis sativa varieties. Nevertheless, tens of millions of wild plants, remnants from these once government-subsidized plots, continue to grow throughout the United States, primarily in the Midwest. As mandated by federal law, which makes no distinction among cannabis species, police destroy some 200 million of these cannabis plants annually. As a result, U.S. retailers who produce hemp-based clothing and other products must exclusively import cannabis fiber from overseas. Active, but not necessarily psychoactive, components of the cannabis plant known as cannabinoids possess a variety of therapeutic applications. Although we will explore this issue in greater depth in Chapter 3, we would be remiss if we did not at least mention marijuana's historic and current applications as a medicinal herb here. At the time this book went to print, 13 states allowed for the legal physician-supervised use of medical marijuana by state-qualified patients. The plant's therapeutic constituents are typically used by patients for their analgesic, pain-reducing, anxiolytic, stress-reducing, and mood-elevating properties. Compounds in marijuana are also effective at reducing nausea and stimulating appetite. Today, doctors can prescribe an FDA-approved medication to treat these symptoms called Marinol. Available in pill form only, Marinol is actually a synthetic version of THC, the primary psychoactive chemical in the marijuana plant. Numerous other therapeutic applications for cannabis have also been documented in recent years, including neuroprotective, antibacterial, and even cancer-fighting properties. Of course, most people associate marijuana with its euphoria-inducing qualities. Throughout history, human beings have utilized the dried leaves and flowers, typically referred to as buds, of the non-pollinated female plant as an intoxicant. It's little wonder why most users report the marijuana high to be relaxing, relatively mild, and short in duration, anywhere from one to two hours. 
Best of all, unlike alcohol, the overindulgence in which can produce nausea, vomiting, hangovers, and even death in extreme circumstances, the use of marijuana produces very few negative side effects. Smoke too much and you'll most likely end up going to sleep.